I want to show you another tool that you should have in your tool belt when proving trig identities. In video TR-32, when I described what an identity is, I used this example. a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b. You may already know that this identity is called the difference between two squares because of the left-hand side. Let's look at the right-hand side. The expressions a plus b and a minus b are conjugates of each other. In math, conjugates are pairs of binomial expressions, each with the same two terms, in this case a and b. In one, they're combined with the plus sign, and in the other, they're combined with the minus sign. a plus b is the conjugate of a minus b, and vice versa. 6x plus 4 and 6x minus 4 are conjugates. 5 plus 2i and 5 minus 2i are conjugates. 1 plus sine theta and 1 minus sine theta are conjugates, which is where we're heading, but not yet. Multiplying conjugates always yields the difference between two squares, and the difference between two squares can always be expressed as the product of two conjugates. Algebraically, multiplying conjugates looks like this. Using the FOIL method for multiplying two binomials, we take the product of the first terms, add the product of the outer terms, add the product of the inner terms, and finally add the product of the last terms. When we multiply conjugates, the outer and inner terms will always be opposites. They negate each other and cancel, leaving the first term squared minus the last term squared. When you see an expression like this, the difference between two squares, you should know that you can replace it with the product of the conjugate pair. And conversely, when you see two conjugates multiplied, you should know that the product will be the difference between the corresponding squares. The identity can be handy in both directions, and it's useful in a lot of branches of mathematics, not just trigonometry. But let me show you why it's particularly useful in trig. Here are the Pythagorean identities as we covered them in TR-33. Look at all these expressions that are the difference between two squares. Remember, one is a square because it's one squared. Depending on what's needed in our equation or proof, we can manipulate expressions to give us a difference between two squares or to give us the product of a conjugate pair. Let's look at one of these in more detail. Here we have the Pythagorean identity written to isolate cosine. The other side is the difference between two squares, and this difference between two squares is, of course, the same as the product of its conjugate pair. The only reason we're remotely interested in discussing the algebra topic of conjugate pairs in a trigonometry course is because the Pythagorean identities can so readily be expressed as the difference between two squares. Let's work an example. Let's prove that cosine squared theta over 1 plus sine theta equals 1 minus sine theta. Let's manipulate the left-hand side, as given. First, please don't make the mistake of thinking we can use a Pythagorean substitution and say that 1 minus sine theta equals cosine theta. The Pythagorean identities all deal with squared trig terms. 1 minus sine squared theta always equals cosine squared theta, but 1 minus sine theta does not always equal cosine theta. So, in this case, we're going to multiply the left-hand side by a unit fraction. We'll let the fraction's numerator and denominator be the conjugate of the binomial term. Since the left-hand side has the binomial 1 plus sine theta, we multiply the left-hand side by 1 minus sine theta over 1 minus sine theta. So we get cosine squared theta times 1 minus sine theta divided by 1 plus sine theta times 1 minus sine theta. Let's look at the denominator. When we multiply conjugates, we get the difference between the squares of the terms. So the denominator becomes 1 minus sine squared theta. Now the denominator is in a form we can use with the Pythagorean identity. 1 minus sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta and we can cancel cosine squared theta from the numerator and denominator to get the right-hand side. Let's look at the fraction denominator for each step. I'm showing it in blue. We started with 1 plus sine theta. Then we multiplied by its conjugate, 
1 minus sine theta. This yields the corresponding difference between two squares, 1 minus sine squared theta. Using the Pythagorean substitution, 1 minus sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta, and that was the key to proving this identity. There's not one surefire method to prove trig identities. Sometimes your first approach won't lead anywhere, so try again with a different tactic. The strategy is to simplify and manipulate one side using two types of tools. First are the trig tools, such as trig function definitions in terms of cosine and sine, reciprocal identities, and Pythagorean identities. Second, and please don't forget, are algebra tools, such as combining fractions with common denominators, factoring, simplifying, and multiplying by conjugate fractions. Practice is the best way to get proficient. You can find more worked out problems on YouTube channels besides mine, and worksheets online that are full of examples. Just search for trig identity proofs. Here's a simple proof to illustrate how important it is to remember algebra. Prove cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta equals 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Well, 2 sine squared theta doesn't look like anything we've encountered before. We don't have any identities that include 2 sine anything. Let's consider that subtracting 2 sine squared theta is the same thing as subtracting sine squared theta twice. So the right-hand side can be rewritten as 1 minus sine squared theta minus sine squared theta. We can collect the 1 minus sine squared theta and replace it with cosine squared theta by Pythagorean substitution, thus yielding the left-hand side. So don't forget your algebra just because we're studying trigonometry. Let's do another proof with conjugates. Prove 1 minus sine theta divided by cosine equals cosine divided by 1 plus sine theta. We usually manipulate the most complicated looking expression, but these two look similar, so we can choose either one. I'll choose the right hand side. The denominator looks like it's inviting us to multiply by its conjugate, so we'll multiply numerator and denominator by 1 minus sine theta. That gives us cosine theta times 1 minus sine theta divided by 1 plus sine theta times 1 minus sine theta. Simplifying the denominator yields 1 minus sine squared theta, the difference between two squares, which in turn we can replace with cosine squared theta by the Pythagorean identity. Canceling a cosine theta from numerator and denominator yields the left-hand side. This has been a long video, but I have some important parting words. When you prove an identity, the goal is a clear step-by-step -step proof. If you present the proof with skipped or combined or confusing steps, your instructor won't be impressed that you came up with the right answer because you were given the answer when the problem began. Yes, the two sides are equal. Rather, the goal should be a sequence of steps explained clearly that another student could follow step by step and agree with your conclusions. This is sound advice, not only for trigonometry, but for all science, technology, engineering, and math disciplines. Explain your work clearly before you're asked to. This video has an accompanying X video, TR-35X, with a few more proofs.